Welcome everyone to our A to J Author new user webinar. This is Jessica Frank. I'm A to J Author's project manager. So each month I like to include some tips and tricks that relate to issues that have come up with authors over the past month. This month um, in, in late June, we had a lot of new stuff um, that we'll talk about today. So I don't have any specific tips or tricks to share. However, just a reminder that you can always reach out to me with any bugs you find or improvements you'd like to see in A to J Author. We're moving now into a period where our TIG funding has ended for now, and so we won't be making a lot of big changes to A to J Author, but we're always open to individual projects with your organization to improve or customize A to J Author, be it the A to J Viewer, the A to J DAT, our document assembly tool, or A to J.org, which is our hosting site to make these tools work better for you and to be a better fit for your needs. So many times these small improvements make a larger impact on the document assembly community as well. So if there's something you'd like to see changed in A to J Author, always feel free to email me, which my email will be included on the last slide, and we can figure out how to accomplish that. We've done several small grants um, in the under, you know, a couple thousand dollars to make a specific improvement that works for a specific legal aid organization, but that has been um, a larger impact overall. So anyway, feel free to reach out to me if you want to see anything that you want um, improved in A to J Author. Today's topic is the 10 new features in A to J Author that we released in uh, last week in June, last week of June, um, the summer 2020 series, 2022 series. For today's webinar, I'm going to be doing a lot of flipping back and forth between prepared slides and the production A to J Author dot org site. So bear with me as I go back and forth, but I think it's more beneficial to see the new tools in action than to just see screenshots of them. And we're going to talk first about the two big new features, then we're going to move into the smaller UX changes. Some of these small UX changes are little, but I think they're going to be really mighty for um, some of our more experienced authors and the new authors as you onboard um, and learn your authoring style. So the first new feature to talk about is the merge tool. This was done under a partnership with uh, Michigan Legal Help, uh, Michigan Legal Services, and um, the TIG program. And I think you all are really going to like this. It should appeal to new authors and experienced authors. The merge tool lets you clone an interview or start with a blank interview, then pick and choose components of other interviews that you wanna add to that original interview. So you can take the logic from interview A, grab the pop-ups from interview B, the interview or the intro screens from interview C, and merge them all into a new hybrid interview. For new authors, you'll be able to build upon the work others in the community have done before to go from zero to expert system in much less time than before. We've had, we have a great community here um, in the document assembly community with sharing, and especially through our partner Law Help Interactive's developer portal. They let you go in there and uh, look at the other work that others have done and host it on their site and download their files. So instead of having to manually now copy and paste over fields or text or logic or multimedia files, you can use this merge tool and merge them into your interviews and reuse their work in your own new interview. Perhaps you like the qualification and the I'm not your lawyer screens um, from Illinois Legal Aid Online, and you, but you want the income verification questions and the logic from a Michigan Legal Help one because it most closely matches your state and your um, organization's verification and qualifications. But you like the pop-up definitions in Spanish from Lone Star Legal Aid or the New York courts. You think they've done a great job of translating common legal terms that you want to reuse. So now you can take all of those pieces and build out your interview without the tedium of manually copying and pasting. And for our advanced authors, you've already done a lot of the work of coming up with standardized variables, introduction screens, explanation pop-ups, learn more, all the stuff that you reuse over and over again in your interviews when you make new ones. Now you can quickly pull those into new interviews, again, without having to manually copy and paste. Let me show you how this works because it's one of those things that sort of um, is hard to explain, but you can see um, see it live. So I'm going to flip over to A to J Author. I'm on our production site. I'm logged into my account, and you'll see there is a little bit of change to the initial interface of the interviews tab. Um, before we just had the create a new interview and edit one of my interviews, but now we have the merge interview components. So if I if I'm wanting to use the merge tool, I click here on the merged interviews. Double click. 
it takes me into step one, which I pick an existing interview that I want to add stuff to, or I pick a blank interview that I want to be my starting point. So I'm gonna want, I wanna start with a blank interview. I'm a new author or I'm starting a new interview. I don't have anything, um, anything yet. I wanna start with a default interview. So I click on a blank interview and it takes me to step two now. So now I have to pick the interviews that I want to pull from. So where, what do I wanna copy into my new blank interview? Um, and by default, my new blank interview is called merged interview with today's date. So I can always change that if I wanna say, um, test for webinar, just gonna merge interview so I can find it later. Whatever it is, you can change the name of your, what is going to be the new hybrid interview. And you can see that the hybrid interview um, is a blank interview. It has the standard variables that come with any brand new A to J guide interview. It has the standard steps um, and the, there's no pop-ups, there's no logic. It's just the four questions that come with a blank interview and the four steps um, and nothing extra. So now I'm gonna pick the interviews I wanna pull from. We've created a, I have the options of my source interviews. Now what I'm gonna copy being all the interviews that I have in my account. Now I do a lot of work in A2G out there being our project manager. So I have a lot of interviews. Um, you will only see the interviews that you have in your account, but we've also created a uh, repository. Now it's small now, but we're looking to build out this repository later with additional interviews that authors have shared or ones that we have curated from the community that are particularly good examples of X. Um, these four are uh, from some of our partners across the community that I looked through and I thought they were really good examples of um, a protection order in Spanish, a living will, a fee request, an adult name change, some of the basic things that you might be looking to do for low hanging document assembly projects. And so this right now is our sample interviews that you can pull from or any of the interviews that you have in your account. If you wanna pull from an interview that you have downloaded from Law Help Interactive, so you really like X states, whatever form, you can upload that into your account and then it will be in this list of interviews um, that you can merge from. So I'm gonna take um, adult name change as my first option. Then it takes me to uh, all of the components of adult name change that I might wanna pull from. So I can collapse all of these fields to make it easier to see, or I can expand them. So I expand the variables and I know I wanna pick um, alias count, bank balance, and uh, one about child support. So I want those three variables pulled into my uh, new hybrid interview. And I also want, I have a lot of variables. <laughs> I also wanna pull in some of the pop-ups. So let's say these first two pop-ups and I wanna pull in um, some multimedia. So I want uh, to pull in the USPS county list. So I'm pulling one media file, two pop-ups, and I think it was three variables from this uh, interview. So you can show you three out of 159 possible. And um, you can also see your existing or your, your new hybrid interview that you're gonna merge into. And I have two options for merging. I can either merge the selected as is, and they're going to override any uh, conflicts in the new interview. So if I have two variables that are named the exact same thing, but they're different types, um, if I merge in a new component into that hybrid interview, it's gonna override if there's a conflict. So that's what merge selected means. Safe merge is if there is a conflict in the name of the incoming variables, if there's a conflict, you're gonna get ZZZ added to the end um, so that you're not overriding anything in, in, that, in the hybrid interview. So safe merge or merge selected. I would say use safe merge until you're comfortable with it, but it's up to you. So I'm gonna do, I know that there's no conflicts, but I'll do safe merge here. Give it a second to merge. And now I'm taken back to uh, that last screen where um, I can see now that alias count here, bank balance and child support have been added to my test for webinar interview. I have added pop-ups, two pop-ups and a media file. So let's say I wanna take uh, some other content to create my new hybrid. I'm gonna go into the fee waiver one, in fee waiver, um, I really like 
I want to use a uh, case number and then I'm going to collapse it and I want to use some of their introduction screens. So I like page one, page two, and page three. So I'm going to pull that content. You'll notice that I didn't select any media files, but because this media file is in one of the pages I selected, it automatically pulled in uh, that related content. So anything that is linked in a page will be pulled in if necessary. So you're going to get all the media files, any pop-ups that are linked, any variables that are needed um, are going to be pulled automatically into your new hybrid interview when you merge it. So again, I know there's no conflicts, but I'll do safe merge. So I safe merge as selected, give it a second to work. And I now have uh, the case number variable that I pulled in. I have the additional pages that I pulled in. So you can see here, page one introduction. It pulled it into a fifth step because there was a, there was a conflict between what was page one uh, question one and what was trying to be page one introduction here. So the steps were different. So um, I put it into a safe merge and so ZZZ merged. It adds the, two pa or the four pages that I pulled in and the additional uh, multimedia content. Then when I'm done with the merge here, I can undo if I need to, I can finish and save, or I can exit without saving. So we're trying to give you options if you make mistakes to go back and change it, um, or you can finish, save your interview, and it takes you back to the interviews tab, and it takes you exactly to that new merged interview, which is now called Test for Webinar. I open it up, and I see that I have those four introduction screens, my two pop-ups, I go to the variables, and I have the variables I pulled in. If I look at all files, I have the media that was pulled in as well. So this, again, lets you quickly uh, combine parts of an interview um, to create that new hybrid interview. The second big new enhancement has to do with our commitment to the highest level of accessibility of our interviews that's possible. So in the summer of 2020, we made a lot of changes to the A to J viewer to bring it up to WCAG, which is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, the level of AAA. That's the highest possible. Um, and so this year, we then we partnered with Atlanta Legal Aid on an LSC TIG to add a document preview option for A to J text templates and built an accessibility best practices guide for PDF templates. The idea behind this enhancement was to optimize the experience for end users who are interacting with the A to J viewer and templates and they're using a screen reader. So the DAT preview is an HTML preview of the text template that allows that screen reader, um, or that template to be read before the document is actually assembled. So if there are errors, the end user can go back and make changes, um, which is also easier with our advanced navigation that was released uh, in December of 2020. They can more easily skip around their interview. But this lets those using a screen reader see the document before it becomes a PDF because PDFs are difficult to read with screen readers. We have included a best practices guide, which is on our website, um, to help you optimize PDFs if you're starting with a PDF template. This is only available for text templates. It only previews the text templates. Let me show you what it looks like. If there is a text template that can be previewed, um, it pops up like this for the end user when they click open document preview. And it shows the document as it would be, including any variables they've included, um, any formatting that's available for them in preview. It only works with the two assemble commands, the destination um, for the, that last button for get my document, um, for the A to J DAT. So assemble generate PDF document and assemble generate PDF and process form. Those are both used with the A to J DAT only. It's not used for any forms that go onto hot docs or have a hot docs template. Again, this only works with the DAT, um, but the button for the you have documents to preview does not show unless you use those two commands. So if you have a hot docs, you have an A to J interview with a hot docs backend, you're hosting it on LHI or your own server, um, and you use success process form to pass the answer file to the hot docs template, your users will not see this open document um, option. John, I'm gonna unmute you. See your, have your hand raised. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Oh, I wanted to make a comment about the merge uh, thing that you were just talking about, the merge sure. thing. <laughs> merge tool. Merge tool. <laughs> I was trying to think, do we have like a name for this? Um, I mean, it's, it's what, what's really cool here is what's going on behind the scenes. 
And, and what the merge tool does is it solves a problem that, that some people in the past have tried to solve by opening up the XML file. Because, uh, I mean, what's going on with Data J Author is it's a website that edits an XML file. It's just an XML editor. Um, but it's a complicated XML editor, or, or the XML is complicated. And so if you were to open it up in Notepad or in, you know, even some sort of XML editor and think, oh, I could like copy from one tool, from one um, uh, guided interview to another just by copying the XML tag and everything inside of it. Um, you, you, you may or may not succeed in that. Uh, I've, I've done that both successfully and unsuccessfully in the past. But it's, it's way better if there's, if it's built within the tool because it knows about Things like uh, like other assets that are attached to the page, uh, like like variable names and other and other issues like that. And so it, it sort of scaffolds all that for you. So so if you if you if you're trying to do something you know, particularly unusual that involves opening up the XML file, you know, um, you know, let us know and maybe that's some sort of capability that that would be useful to have inside of A to J Author, and it would be valuable to all sorts of authors. I just wanted to explain a little bit of the, the nerdy back end of that. Thanks. I'll uh, leave you unmuted if you want to jump in. So just feel free to self mute and jump in whenever. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about the uh, dot preview. Then um, the next. So those were the first two big enhancement that, enhancements that we've added uh, in the June code push. The next eight are sort of little bit little bit enhancements of um, the user interface and the user experience for the author side for the most part. So this first one, creating new variables on the fly, was a back burner project that one of our developers added to the June code push, um, which I think you are all really going to appreciate. This lets you create variables on the fly right at the point in which you need that new variable, like when you are putting a variable in a field or in a button, the variable design editor is linked and you can create them. So there's no more having to flip back and forth between the variables tab or trying to flip back to the questions once you've created it or you've forgotten to create one and you gotta go out of the question and then come back in. It's all right there. So um, you can see in the background here, next to the field is the variable name, um, and this new button that says add new. When you click add new, it opens up this variable design editor, which, which lets you um, either select from ones you already have or create new ones. Another cool feature is in this variable name, it starts to do a character sort um, by variables you already have. So that was already built in, but um, if you start typing a variable and you realize that you actually don't have that one, you can create a brand new one right on the fly. It's all right at your fingertips. So let me just show you that real quick um, because this is something that a lot of our authors have requested um, and it's sort of, it's one, just one of those little, it'll shave time off of actually authoring. Let me go out of my merged interview. Let's go into a blank interview and I'm here in my question and I scroll down so you can see, you can add new variables here at the counting variable level, at the outer loop counting variables, so if you're using nested repeat loops. If you go into the button section and you're gonna wanna use a variable, you can add a new one here. You can add new here for a counting variable. If I'm in a field and uh, I wanna add something new, shows me the list of the variables I already have, and I realize that the one I wanna use is not here, I really wanna use client full name. So I click add new, start typing client, full name TE, it's a text variable. Oops, sorry, I clicked out of it. It's a text variable. I can make it the other types if I wanted to. I can check if it's repeating or not. Everything that you would do on the variables tab, you can do right here. I click save and it inserts that now uh, into the variable, variable name field. Um, it shows me the highlighted one. I can always change it later if I decide that's not the right variable to use on this field, but I have created a brand new variable right at the point in which I need it. So I can close that. If I go to my variables tab, client full name is there the same as any other variable created on the fly. So really quick and easy to add those variables right at the point in which you need them. Uh, the next one here, the autocomplete of logic statements is another author Easter egg goodie here. Um, this does some of the heavy lifting in conditional statements. So if you start typing an open bracket, 
symbol, uh, A to J author will pull up any of the variable names that match the characters you've typed. So in the screenshot on the top here, I started typing C-L-I-E and client first name, client middle name, and client last name were bumped to the top of the variables option list for me. You can see there in front of this uh, break. And um, I would be able then to select to add them to my auto, to my logic. It also lets you see all of the variables that you have in your list anyway. So if you actually start typing something and it's not what you expected, you can search all of the variables you already have. Um, but it just helps you raise those ones that you uh, that match the characters you already have up to the top of the list so that you can select from them. This autocomplete also works with go to statements. So as soon as you type go to, a list of pages in your interview pops up. So with both the variable and the page name autocomplete, if you see the page of the variable you want to use in the conditional, just click on it and A to J author is going to insert it into your logic statement. So there's going to be no more broken logic statements because you misspelled a variable name or um, you couldn't remember exactly what you called a certain page and so you were flipping back and forth or you messed it up. Um, I'm not mentioning any names, but I've seen quite a few authors that send me bug reports that their logic isn't working right, um, A to J is not working, this page is showing up, it's saying page not found, um, I know I did the logic right. And the solution is that you, they didn't have the page name exactly the same way that they did it um, in the logic statement exactly as the same way they did it in the actual page name. So they were off with an, a, an extra space. They had done a space after the name of, uh, they had finished the name of the page. It's weird little things like this that are going to be eliminated by being able to just select what A to J author knows to be the truth of that page and inserting it. It's totally myself included in that statement. This one is a personal favorite new feature of mine. Um, in the past, I've definitely annoyed myself by naming a series of questions with a naming convention that I'm really going to remember this time. And then I go to the logic section of that next question to draft a conditional statement to do a go-to or a set, and I promptly forget every page name that I just made. And I have to close out the question design editor or move it over enough so that I can see it, um, in the grayed out section behind what the actual page name is. It's a lot of back and forth hassle that hopefully this will be eliminated uh, by the autocomplete. Oh, okay, we have an author uh, comment that, uh, just a reminder that in many browsers or computer systems, you may need to do a hard reload to see variables you've just added, that this author is constantly getting errors when they use variables they just added. A lot of that can be solved by uh, sticking with one interview. If you have multiple interviews open um, within the same browser, so maybe you have uh, one interview you're working on and in another tab you have another interview open, the browser is caching variables and can get confused. Um, sometimes when you create new variables, it, it um, isn't saved into the browser's cache and there can be some error messaging, but a hard reload of your, um, your browser and a clear of your cache will usually solve any problems where you know you have a variable and A to J is telling you there's an error, um, just clear your cache and it'll usually fix that. So thank you for that reminder. The next enhancement falls into the category of enabling authoring preferences. So if you've been here a while, you remember in A to J Author 4, which if you haven't been here for a while, that was the Flash-based based version of the authoring tool, which went into maintenance mode way back in 2015, but was much loved. Um, and so uh, if in A to J Author 4, when you authored, you opened the question design editor and you tabbed through the different areas to add content, to create fields, to add the question text, to add logic, you were, you were tabbing through. Moving into this web-based version, um, we made authoring all a scroll situation. So you scrolled to see it all. You just moved through the question design editor all the way from top to bottom. We have added back the option to choose a tabbed view. So if you prefer uh, that tabbed view, it is up here as an option now. And um, you can toggle back and forth bete between the tabbed view and the normal scroll to see it all for the web-based version. Um, and this one is better seen than talked about. So let me demo that real quick for you. So if I go back to the pages tab, I could just open any page and up at the top is tabbed view. So normal view is page information, question information, scroll down to learn more. Then there's fields, buttons, and logic. So I, I move from top to bottom. Some people prefer then the tab view. So if I click tab view, now I see just page and question information. Then I see just learn more information. 
fields, buttons, and advanced logic. So this, oh, I love this so much. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. If you had any of those. Um, but as you're moving through this, uh, you can always go back to full view and tab view. It is a question or a page by page preference. Um, so if you have something that, uh, you know, you're going to be working extensively in advanced logic and you don't want to have to scroll because you have a really long page with lots of fields, flip to tab view, always go to the advanced logic and um, you're just able to jump around a little bit better. So author preference on that one. Uh, next. And, and, let, let, let me let me cut in and say something. I mean, all, all of these things are 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 to make the author uh, uh, a better a better author. And and why you know why should we why should we coddle you authors so much? Um, and and that's because you're expensive. Your expertise as the person, either the subject matter expertise or translating the subject matter expertise, you know, the law into the interviews is is probably the most expensive part. And I don't mean just in dollars. I mean in time and effort and and the depth of knowledge uh, necessary. And so and so effort spent making you making this process and, and your authoring process more efficient, uh, less frustrating, is is always well spent. It benefits everybody who authors. And it's not like we invented this idea. I mean this 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 is what in in software development there's been a huge amount of of advancement in IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. Microsoft, uh, Visual Studio, uh, Python, PyCharm, I don't know, there's so many of them out there. And they have so many uh, things that help the programmer be a better programmer so he doesn't type the wrong uh, variable so that the indentations are correct, so that the function names are, are consistent and so on. And all we're doing is, is applying similar concepts but inside this no code environment, because we don't expect or hope, uh, we don't want to put more burden on authors to have to learn more. We want them to be focused as much as possible on the questions and their sequence and on getting the law right. Um, and, and so, so this, this is just an extension of the whole idea of, of what do programmers do to help themselves. And, and the lawyers or the subject matter experts are like, are sort of programmer lights here, no coders, right? Um, and, and that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Okay, so uh, another slide and another new button to talk about here in this enhancement. This new feature is the edit page option. So sometimes when you're selecting a destination for your page, you want to see the next destination. You want to go work on that next page. And in the past, you would have had to close the existing page you were working on and then go click on the name of that other page and go to it. This new edit button next to the destination field in the button section allows you to jump to whatever page is set as the destination. So you're working on your page, you edit everything, it's ready to go, you're ready to move on, you select the destination, and now you wanna move to that page, click edit page, and it will jump you to that next page. That you've selected. You can continue to jump through your interview without having to go into preview mode and then edit or closing the question design editor and going to that next page. It's just one less click for authors. You don't have to close it and then reopen it. You can just do that one click, um, sort of the same idea that we talk about with our, um, our end users that you as authors want to make it as easy as possible to move through the interview for your end users. We as A to J author want to make it as easy as possible for you authors to move through the authoring process. And this is a hard coded jump to then whatever that next uh, page is. So this one will hopefully shave some time, a little bit of time off of your authoring process as well. The next enhancement is adding the additional accessibility features that we added into our Learn Mores into the full report. So the full report, if you're not familiar with it, is under the report tab. It shows you everything that is in your A to J guided interview. So soup to nuts, it is all of the variables, all of the logic, all of the questions, all of the Learn More, and now all of the Learn More media label, graphic alt text, um, and video transcripts that are available in your interview are shown um, in the Learn More with um, uh, any references to it. So this is showing that in this Learn More here, I don't have a media label, I don't have audio graphic or a graphic alt text, which is just a, a short explanation for screen readers about what a picture is. Um, I do have a video 
And that video has a video transcript to go along with it for accessibility purposes. And it's just a short video of rain outside of a window. So all of that additional accessibility uh, information is now added into a full report that can be reviewed by anyone that would be looking at a full report. So full reports can be used by subject matter experts, perhaps um, you aren't the subject matter expert on this form, but you're doing the development and you want your subject matter experts to be able to review the entire interview and read through it um, and make and mark up any changes on, you know, a, the PDF that you can print or um, you want them to be able to see the interview without having to click through the interview, make sure that they get to all the branches or you're getting this translated and you want the translator to uh, translate things like the video transcript or the alt text that's gonna be used because this interview is in Spanish and you want the accessibility content to also be in Spanish. Um, any of that now is included in a full report. This enhancement with the calculator and the calendar in line cleans up the viewer interface a little bit when an author provides either a calculator to the end user or they use a date field, which we add a calendar date picker automatically uh, to every date field. It just brings those icons in line with the field instead of below them. So before it was below it and it took up the same amount of space as another field and it caused a scroll bar sometimes if you had additional content or more than two or three fields, um, this just cleans it up. So if you have a calculator um, or the calendar, it puts it in line with the field uh, and makes it more of a seamless experience for the end user. This one about new error messages falls into the improve the experience for authors and try and make sure that there aren't any bugs before things get published. So the first one on the left here is showing you a warning when you have created a field and you have forgotten to put a variable into that field and you go to preview it um, or you, you go to leave the editor. And what it's doing is telling you that you have an unassigned variable in field one and you can either cancel and go back and edit that and like, oh yeah, I forgot to put a variable here, let me do that. Or you can click continue and it's gonna move you into preview mode. Um, like I had, I had clicked preview, that's what triggered this warning. This is particularly a problem when there is a variable field that is left without a variable because A to J author creates an unknown variable to store whatever value is in that blank. And if you are using a hot docs template, hot docs chokes on the fact that we put this unknown variable um, in there. And so there are errors that occur then when you publish this to LHI that are, you know, doc the document fails to assemble and it takes a lot of debugging from uh, me and the capstone team and the LHI team to try and figure it out. And more than several times, it has turned out to be a missing variable in a variable field. So I'm sure that uh, the capstone team will love this, that uh, authors are warned ahead of time. So you know that you are leaving something undone and you should, you know, make sure that that um, you're you're acknowledging, you know, you're you're checking that I know what I'm doing and I'm moving on, or you can go back and fix it. So hopefully that catches a lot of those um, missed uh, variable insertions. The the warning on the right is a little bit more clarification on when there is an error in logic, and so what this is doing is I typed a logic statement that said, you know, if has answered client middle name, go to one dash name. The problem is one dash name doesn't exist. Um, and so before it would just throw up an error, the little icon of the triangle with the exclamation point, the, the warning icon, um, but it wouldn't give me any clarification as to what this problem was unless it was a missing variable. Here we've added additional um, error messaging that tells you that this page name doesn't exist. So you know what the problem is, right at which the point of, uh, of the problem, and I can go ahead and fix my variable name or, or my page name, or I can use the new page picker that I mentioned in the past to make sure this doesn't happen anymore. So we warn you if it does happen, but we give you tools to help you so that it doesn't happen in the first place. And then the final new uh, enhancement to talk about is the no more drag and drop hassle for reordering fields with arrow up and down. We have uh, notoriously had some issues with drag and drop both in our templates and uh, in the fields themselves. Things didn't stick where you expected to drag them. It was clunky. You weren't sure that you were getting it into the position you actually wanted it to when you wanted to move one field into a new position or one button into a new position. 
we've added, uh, we fixed the issue with the DAT templates, the text templates about two years ago, but we just implemented that same fix here into the fields and button section, which lets you reorder fields with a simple up and down error, arrow. So you wanna move this uh, text variable or text field um, into the second position instead of the first. I click the down arrow and it moves. Uh, moves it and whatever the second one was would be moved up into the first position. So easy to move uh, one variable or one field or button to a new position without having to worry about the drag and drop hassle. All right, so that is all the new features that I have to show you. That was like a very fast 30 minute overview of all the new stuff. All of this is in production right now on a to jauthor.org. You can play with it, you can use it, you can check it out yourself, log into your authoring account, you don't have an authoring account, feel free to email me here at jessica at cali.org and I will help you get that settled. Um, if you have any questions now, feel free to raise your hand and I will unmute you. Or you can put your comments in the question box or the chat box and I will open those now while I wait for any of those to come in or any hands to come up. Um, just a reminder that you can always reach out to me at jessica at cali.org with any authoring questions or to help you troubleshoot anything. Uh, don't bang your head against uh, the wall for more than a few minutes with any authoring stuff. Um, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll help you if I can, or I'll direct you to some resources if there's something um, that I can't help you with right at the moment. I'm usually pretty good about responding. Um, and our next webinar is going to be August 4th at 11 a.m. So I will pause to see if there are any hands or comments or John, if you have anything. Well, same here. If you have any questions that you think I can help with, um, or you would like uh, um, like me to come talk to your group about Cali, uh, legal aid organizations can be members of Cali, um, as can uh, staff at courts and law libraries. And so, uh, you know, we, you know, besides A to J author, of course, Cali lessons, free case books, and other tools that we uh, build for uh, legal education, but that might be useful and helpful um, for your purposes. Great, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any additional questions or any hands up. So thank you all for attending this webinar and we will see you all again in August.